Hello and welcome, I'm JD and today we're going to look at a, another scout build that you can incorporate within one of your fleets. Note that this is also a little bit more advanced than the Spyglass build that is also in this shipbuilding playlist, simply due to the fact that it requires a little bit more attention when using it. So let's have a look at the build. We're going to start with the Spyglass Corvette that we've previously shown, a basic CIC, two plant control centers and a berthing module. Then we're also going to have the micro reactor, a whiplash drive for the extra power, a spyglass radar and a small reactor booster. And then to add to that, we're going to add a bullseye radar and a pinard electronic support module. So the premise of this scout ship is that you turn off the radar in order to access the bullseye and the pinard. And later on, if you need to, then you can access the spyglass again. So let's have a quick look at the positioning of the bullseye and the pinard. You can ultimately uh, mix this up however you want, but I've got the uh, pinard electronic support module on the front module as the pinard has a 180 degree detection range. If I was to put a pinard here, what you'd actually have to do is elevate the ship's nose in order to bring this line up to where that current detection line is, where that pinard is. So basically by putting it on the front mount, you can detect everything out from there. And then if there's anything above, you can just angle your nose up slightly. And this should reduce the radar cross section and the likelihood that your Corvette gets detected. And then you've also got the fact that the bullseye has an elevation limit of 89 degrees and minus five. So it should be able to come up a little bit and support anything and see anything sort of in this area here. Or what's more likely by the time you've elevated this slightly, this is gonna have a clear angle that is then going to be able to lock onto the target. You can mix this up. You could put the bullseye on one of these small amounts. You could also take things such as chaff, uh, you could even move the bullseye off to the other side and put missiles here. It's up to you, but the base build uh, that we're going to go with is just the bullseye and the pinard for this example. As stated before, the reason why we have the bullseye and the pinard combination, and we'll show this in a demonstration shortly, is that the pinard will detect the line of bearing out further than the spyglass. So the spyglass has that hard cap of 11.5 kilometers, where the pinard will detect anything out to the 1.25 times the length of the radar. So if we are detecting a spyglass radar on an enemy ship, well that's gonna be 11.5 kilometers multiplied by 1.25. So you're probably gonna be seeing it out around 13. And then when they come in within range, you're able to fire the bullseye control radar, which has the maximum range of nine kilometers along that line of bearing in order to lock that target. Now we're only able to generate 4,224 kilowatts of power, but ultimately we can't use the spyglass and the bullseye at the same time, as that would be 4,300. It's just a little bit more than what we can generate. And the spyglass and the pinard working at the same time uh, actually doesn't do anything as the spyglass takes precedence. So you're just wasting that 200 kilowatts of power. This is important to note as you need to uh, turn off the spyglass in order to access whatever else is on this ship. And then you need to turn that off and cease that in order to reactivate the spyglass. So let's now have a look at a practical demonstration of this. All right, so here we are. We are in the small testing range. We have our three ships. We have two pinards, and we also have another ship that all have their radars turned off. Uh, we simply have the heavy cruiser here to stop the game exiting us out because these have no offensive capability. And across from us is a three ships. Uh, I believe one's a rail battleship and two others. And you can already see that based on where we've spawned in, and we've all spawned in on the same plane, we're automatically detecting the first lines of bearing from the pinards as we are able to make use of that 180 degrees from the pinard going forward. We're just going to detect the other two. We'll change the heading, just moving it up incrementally. There's all three. And because we have the radar off, we have all the power that if we right click on one of the lines of bearing and press lock, we will now lock that target. We can do the same with this other one. There you go, we've even now got the cross fixes and we've also got a bullseye on our third ship, which we can now provide a lock. So I was saying before that if we have everything on at the same time, we won't have power. So here you can see that we've um, got the low power indicator because I've turned on both the radar and the electronic support module. Um, however, the radar takes precedence over the electronic support um, ELINT tracks, which is why we see the spyglass tracks there. So you've got to turn the electronic support module off, and I won't be able to reaccess that electronic support module unless I turn off the radar to then re-divert power back to electronic support. This ship also has a VLS-23, 
which I can still access with the radar on, as we still have enough power to access a VLS-23 launcher, which only requires 50 kilowatts. If I turn the radar off and I turn electronic support on, I can still access that extra functionality as well as providing the lock. So what type of tactics would you use with these ships? Well, here I have our rail heavy cruiser, which is going to be providing fire support to the rest of our team. And we have our two scouts that'll provide the vision and the locks for that with the pinard and the bullseye combo. Noting that I am on the small testing range, so ideally you would uh, have all these ships out of detection. You could also have your heavy cruiser's radar off. One to help reduce its signature size to try and hide it a little bit better, but also the fact that it isn't detected by electronic intelligence and it has all the power going to the rest of the systems. So by positioning your two scouts in a forward pattern, depending on obviously where the enemy likely approaches are, you can make use of the ELENT tracks. Here I have two, both with their heading slightly elevated, as you can see there and there pointed towards the enemy, we've got cross fixes. And so now I can provide locks to two separate targets for our heavy cruiser to engage. And there we go, our rail heavy cruiser is engaging targets. Note this is sped up. This is not how fast a rail gun fires. One of the other things you can also do is periodically turn off your pinard and turn on your radar. Just see what tracks are out there and then turn it back off again. So you just do this in a split second. And that way, you know that there are rough targets are about 4,000 meters away. Now I can turn my pinard back on and move my ship into a position where I think that those ships are. If I can't find anyone because the enemy also has their radar off and I can't pick up their ELINT tracks with the pinard, what I can do is I can turn the spyglass on for one of the corvettes and then use the other corvette to actually provide the lock. And so this keeps one of the corvettes safe to provide the lock without then compromising both ships at the same time. This will be range and terrain dependent. So if you wanna operate on more of one side of the map, and so that might look like your heavy cruiser being in one position, then we have, and if I just move around so you can see it, one ship high, one ship low, making use of your heading and roll so that your pinard's always in the best spot, as is your lockers, and then you're able to provide the locks to that. So now we just operate on one side of the map, let our team operate on the other, and we're able to either deny or engage around this half, this third. All right, so that's it for this video. I will put a link in the description to the Steam Workshop link so that you can just subscribe to this fleet, add it in as a template so that you can then just automatically throw it into any of your fleets when you want to design. Also consider putting a comment down below, would you add anything to what's already been presented or what sort of tactics have you found useful for other players to use that you can then also describe and help them out. So thanks for watching and take care.